Because it's spooky time, I'm letting a wheel spin inside my Halloween house in Minecraft. The wheel will decide what biome we build in, the plot size, how many rooms we get, what will be in each room, the amount of floors, the shape of the windows, the outdoor decorations, the color of the house, and some haunting guests. <sighs> ah, that's a lot of options. I'm a little out of breath. I'm embarrassed. But anyway, let's see what biome we get to build in. It could be the Crimson Forest, Warped Forest, Soul Sand Valley, Nether Waste, Taiga Plains, Stony Shores, Dark Forest, Swap, or the End. And we got Taiga. Now what will our plot size be? Will we get 20 by 20, 20 by 30, 30 by 30, 10 by 30, or 40 by 40? 30 by 30, that's not too bad. But now how many rooms do we have to build? It could be one, it could be 10. Okay, because the wheel gave us so many rooms, now we have to spin the wheel 10 more times to find out what room is gonna be in each room. Room number one is a conservatory full of dead plants. Awesome. Room number two is a library. Room number three is a living room. Number four, a bathroom. Number five, a bedroom. Number six, a candy room. Number seven, a dungeon. Number eight, a study, number nine, is a dining room, and our last room is a kitchen. Okay, well now that we know what's gonna be in all 10 rooms, how many floors is this house gonna be? It could be one, or it could be five. Three, that's not bad. It could have been five, and I would have been sad. Now let's see what our windows are gonna look like. All of the windows in this house are gonna be two by three. Now's the fun part. Well, it's all the fun part, but now we get to find out what outdoor decor the house gets and we get to spin the wheel three times. Yes, I made that choice. I decided on three. That way we could have lots of outdoor decorations. We could have floating ghosts, tombstones, spider webs, dead trees, pumpkins, bats, or bones. Our first spin is gonna give us a tech and bats. Our second spin is gonna be dead trees. And the final spin for this category will be pumpkins. It's perfect. Did you notice? I'm dressed up like a pumpkin. But anyway, we have one final major decision for the wheel to pick, and that is the house color. Please don't give me candy corn. Please don't give me candy corn. <gasps> Purple! <laughs> Our Halloween house is gonna be so cute. But before we can start building, we have to see who is living in our house. 10 rooms, 10 spins, 10 guests. A bat, a witch, a spider, a zombie, a skeleton, a snow golem, a creeper, a piglin, a black cat, and an enderman. That was a lot to get through, but now it's time to build. Purple Halloween house in the taiga biome. I used light purple planks for the walls, a darker purple for the roof, and look at these windows I found. They're so pretty. I actually liked them so much that, uh, I made the entire roof out of windows. Anyway, as you can see from the blue wool outline around this build, I got it to fit in a 30 by 30 plot. It might, um, be on the edge a little bit in the back there, but it fits. Let me show you my plans for the inside. As we enter the Halloween house, this is what we see. Uh, it's a little crazy in here, I know, but I think it looks cool. So immediately you're greeted by this grand staircase that leads to the top floor. Remember, the wheel gave us three floors. So we have this top floor, this main floor, and we have a basement. If we go up these stairs, I was thinking that this area could be for a bedroom. Over here, we could have a study. Then down the stairs this way, I want this to be a kitchen. Across from the kitchen, we'll have the dining room. Back here, we could have a living room. And across from the living room, we could have a library. Maybe it's because of the windows, but the area between the library and the living room is probably one of my favorites. It's a shame this has to be filled with dead plants, but this is the conservatory and it's gonna look awesome, even with the dead plants. Now, so far I've only shown you seven of the 10 rooms we're supposed to have in this house. So that means if you have to pee or want some candy, you have to go to the dungeon. Spooky.
<laughs> but yeah, so down here, this main area is going to be the dungeon. Then through these doors, we'll have a bathroom. Through these doors, we'll have a candy room. And it'll be great. Well, now that we've established where everything is going to go, that means it's time to decorate. As you probably noticed while I was walking around, there are chests everywhere. And inside these chests, we have fun decorations. Obviously, this is kitchen stuff for the kitchen, dining room stuff for the dining room. But actually, you know where I want to start? I want to start in the conservatory. Look at this stuff. Ta -da! Death. <laughs> that sounds so bad. But it's supposed to be a dead plant room. So we have these cool petrified lichen plants. We have hanging fruits, which technically are probably still alive, but they're brown and... I'm gonna pretend they're dead. I know the botanist workbench technically has live plants on it, but come on, it's so pretty. We can just pretend that the owner of this house used this table as inspiration to keep their plants alive and then it just never happened. Because this is a plant room, we obviously have to have hanging plants from the ceiling. <gasps> Whoa, wait, what? How is my flower pot doing that? I didn't know that my flower pots did. Wait. <gasps> What is this? Oh, I love that. Can I put a dead bush in it? Yes! Now, just so you can see the difference, this is the regular glow lichen, and this is the petrified version. <sighs> I'd say that's pretty spooky. Next to that, I want to put flower boxes on the walls, and I also want to put them on the ground, too. I kind of want the space to feel really cluttered. The overwhelming amount of plants in here would kind of explain why they're all dead. I have an idea. Look at my idea. I love that. They're just dead leaves, but I love them. I might be getting a little carried away, but look what I just found. There's little mushrooms in there. And then I also found these. They're drying herbs, which are green right now, but because they're drying, they will die. Okay, I think we have enough stuff in here. So now we can fill these pots with plants. Moving on to the living room, I want to put a fireplace over here. We'll add a campfire, some iron bars, and of course, we need a mantle. On this mantle, we can have a candelabra surrounded by some wall candles, and above that, we can have a cat painting. Breaking news! I found firewood. I was placing this by the fire, and I was like, oh, that's so cute! Then I accidentally placed them again, and I found out that they stack up! This is literally so cool. Besides the firewood, we could add some curtains to the windows, a carpet on the floor, and obviously, we need some couches. In the library, I wanna make another fireplace just like the one in the living room because I think symmetrical fireplaces are cool. Now, because this is a library, we're gonna need a bunch of books. We have books like this, stackable books like this, and we even have these. There's a cat on this shelf. So I got a little carried away and I added a ton of books. It's a bit chaotic, but I like it. We got bookshelves, we got books. I put another candelabra on the fireplace and by the window, I put cushions so we can have window seats. Now we just have to figure out what to do with the rest of this space. We could add a couple of sofas to match the living room. We could add a bit of purple carpet and in all the other empty places, we can add some more books. In the kitchen, I've already gone ahead and added some spooky floating candles, but now we have to add the rest of the stuff. I have been wanting to decorate with these kitchen pieces for so long. Not only do they match this build perfectly, but the counters have cats on them. Look at that little kitty cat. Meow. But okay, we can put the messy sink over here, then we can add a bunch of counters going like this this we could put a few more here and then obviously we're gonna add an island Ta -da! now this is probably gonna look a little weird but i don't want to get rid of the windows so i will be placing these upper cabinets right over them to make it look a little less weird i was thinking that we could put some slabs up here and then fill this awkward space with some random knickknacks before we do that though we need a refrigerator we need some carpet by the sink and because i don't have an actual trash can i'm gonna to pretend that this is one. On the kitchen island, we could have a cat plant. Then we could have a bunch of these cat mugs. And of course, we need some bar stools. Over here, we can add some bread. Here, we could have some salt and pepper. And then on this cutting board, we can have a knife. Now for this funny upper cabinet area, I did pick out a few things that I think will help. We have some hanging plants, we have some cacti, we have plants in a jar, and we even have some plain glass jars. See? 
it's kind of cute. Because this Halloween house is gonna have 10 guests haunting it, our dining area needs to have enough chairs for all of them. We could put a lawn table right here and then obviously surround it with chairs. Not only do we have these cute purple ones that match the house, but we also have these. They're little ghosts. Wait. Should the ghost chairs be floating? Okay, wait, I like it, but I liked it better when some were floating and some weren't. <gasps> yes, that's cool. Now around the table, I want to put a bunch of dead coral so it kind of looks like a fluffy carpet. And then on the table, we can have a cake and a cake stand, a blueberry muffin, a couple of empty plates, and we can add a bunch of floating candles. Now, if we have 10 places to sit at the dining table, then we should probably also have at least 10 places to sleep in the bedroom. Luckily, I do have bunk beds, and I've also made these little spaces on either side of the rooms up here. So this space could be like the main bedroom for the owner of the house, and these side areas can be for guests. Cute! We have six bunks over here, six bunks over here, and we've got some floating candles. Now for the main bedroom, I want to make a giant fancy bed. To do that, we'll need a black bed, some purple wool, black fences, and slabs. These four blocks can act as a headboard. Place our bed in the middle, surrounded by slabs, and then we'll place a bunch of fences to make a fancy canopy bed. To make this even cuter, we can add cat garland! Ta-da! Of course, near the bed, we have to have a sheep plushie. Then we can add a lamp and we can add these. They're star and moon lights. We have a star string, a moon string, a pink and gold moonlight, and we also have these. Now to make things a bit more cozy, we're adding another fuzzy carpet. Da -da -da -da. Now I know this space right here at the top of the stairs isn't technically a room, so I'm gonna pretend it's an extension of the bedroom by adding a couple of cushions to hang out on. The last area on this top floor is the study, so obviously we need a desk, lots of books, and office clutter. We can place a desk in the middle, add some office supplies and a notebook. We can add some cool things like a globe and a lantern. On this wall we can add a bulletin board. Up here we can add a painting. We could add another notebook, some scattered papers, a stack of papers, a smaller stack of papers, and then maybe on the floor we can have a pile of mail. We've got some envelopes, an open box of books, and an unopened package. Now we can hang a bunch of plants, stack a bunch of books, add a chair, and our study is complete. Now the top two floors are done, all that's left is the bottom floor and the outside decor. The Halloween house is complete. As you can see on the outside, we have some bats floating above the house. We've got cute little pumpkins, and I attempted to make some dead trees. Now, as we go inside of this house, I'm gonna be spawning in all of the haunting guests that the wheel chose. First on the left, we have the kitchen, and since this space is very much themed around a black cat, I think we should spawn the cat in here. You are so cute. Ah. Is perfect. But next to the kitchen, we have the library that I think would suit an Enderman. Hello, sir. In the conservatory full of dead plants, we can have a spider. The living room could have a zombie. And in our spooky dining room, we can have a creeper. As we go upstairs, we'll find a bedroom on the left and a study on the right. In the study, we can have a snow golem. And in the bedroom, we can have a bat. Why is the zombie dying? Hello? Don't go in here! This is not your room! This is dangerous! Danger. No. Uh... <laughs> anyway, down these stairs, we have the dungeon. And in this dungeon, I have, like, a bunch of potion bottles and cauldrons and stuff. Because I'm pretending that the owner of this dungeon, uh, likes to test their potions on their prisoners. On the right side of the dungeon, we do have a bathroom with a toilet, a shower, a sink, and a tub. And on the left side, we have a candy room full of candied apples and gumballs. Because there's potions in this dungeon, I think it makes the most sense to spawn a witch in here. Oh. And you don't want to be... Okay. 
We could put a skeleton in the candy room. And our last guest is a piglet in the bathroom. So how did I do? Do you like what the wheel picked? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're new, make sure to subscribe.